How's it going, everybody? Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, New Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. Well, it's Wednesday on this show, and I'm out of focus. We'll get that fixed here in just a moment. But we got a lot to talk about here today. Last night, everyone's favorite show, NXT 2.0. I'll do a uh, quick recap of that show. I'm probably raw as well. We'll see how uh, how much time we have. But obviously, it's also AEW Dynamite coming up here tonight. This is the follow-up to the Double or Nothing show from Vegas. We got a bunch of matches announced. CM Punk is going to be in action. FTR, Darby Allin, Jungle Boy, Britt Baker, John Moxley. And, yes, we will hear from MJF. We'll talk about that here today and a lot of other news. New Japan, best of the Super Junior Finals. The lineup has been announced for that show. We got title matches announced for the NXT In Your House show, which is Saturday this week. So if you guys are big fans of NXT, Saturday is going to be your day. We got uh, ratings for SmackDown, which did not do well. Lowest audience for the show since July 2nd of last year. And, of course, AW Rampage did poorly as well, seeing as how they uh, aired at 6.30 Eastern uh, because of the NBA playoffs, etc. So, all of that today. If you want to, text us, 425-780-7566. That is 425-780-7566. Brian at WrestlingObserver.com is the email address. And, of course, you can follow me on Twitter at Brian Alvarez. So we'll be back in just a moment to kick everything off, everybody. Mike Semper VV joins us. A lot to get into. And we'll be back after the break here on Wrestling Observer Live. Back on the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Semper VV, also of WrestlingObserver.com. And yes, it got me at last. Stricken with COVID right now, everybody. I got it from no you, idea I think. The things I wanted to say. I'm pretty sure I somehow got it from you over this over the airwaves. Oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. I bet it was, uh, it may have been Ed in San Antonio. That's who I'm blaming for all of this. If you would not have gotten back into the wrestling ring to get beaten up uh, by Debbie Malenko, maybe, maybe you would have been safe. But nope, you had to step in there one more time. You've been stricken with everything. The embarrassment of being laid out by Debbie Malenko, a legend. And now COVID. You know, I have uh, uh, largely great immunity, but I think that when she hit me with that cutter, it knocked all of the immunity out of me. And thus I'm suffering. It's possible. So as I've mentioned on a few shows, if you don't think I'm getting my revenge on Debbie Malenko, think again. I like to say that I'm retired and all. I'm not going to do an intergender match. Are you kidding me? It would be completely unfair anyway. But, But I will... I will get my revenge. So anyway, I'm all right, everybody. I appreciate uh, everybody in the chat and everything like that. But we got uh, far bigger fish to fry, including AEW has announced that fans will hear from MJF on Dynamite. Did you guys read my article in Sports Illustrated today? No. What did it say? I tried to tell all of you. But, man, we got this thread. We got this thread on the board and uh it's about mjf and everything that happened starting on saturday when he no showed that uh that fan fest and my god i mean like you know it's it's just so baffling to me because things happen all the time in wrestling and everybody is like they immediately presume it's all a work except like in this situation and in this situation it's like pages and pages of analysis of MGF's psyche and his mental state and this and that. And I tried to warn everybody, but anyway, I got an article on SI.com right now about the whole MGF situation, so I think I did a pretty good job. But you can go read it for yourself. And uh, yes, he's going to be on the show tonight. We will hear from him. And I mean, hello, we're going to hear from him, all right. You know what I'm saying? We're going to hear from MJF tonight. <laughs> so that's on the show, as well as CM Punk and FTR versus Max Caster and the Gun Club, Darby Allen, Jungle Boy, and Luchasaurus, Matt Hardy and Christian Cage versus Hikaleo, Bobby Fish, Kyle O'Reilly, and the Young Bucks. As noted, both uh, Adam Cole and Jeff Hardy, uh, very, very banged up. And uh, uh, we'll see. we'll see when they return. I mean, with Jeff Hardy... 
I mean, Adam Cole's going to be returning, I would presume, a lot earlier than Jeff Hardy because he's obviously much younger and much less beat up. Uh, Britt Baker and Jamie Hayter will face Ruby Soho and Tony Storm. John Moxley will face young Daniel Garcia. And yes, we will hear from MJF. So, uh, you know, it's going to be a very interesting show coming up here tonight. What's the, uh, what kind of, do uh, we have anything as far as like, uh, you know, uh, head to head with uh, AW here tonight? Anybody aware of it? Rangers game. Just a Rangers game? Hmm. Yeah, come on. Let's go Rangers. What do you mean, come on? That's why I asked, because I don't know what games are uh, are going on. But yeah, that's the lineup here for tonight, and uh, we'll talk about all of the fallout for this show coming up tomorrow. And hey, yesterday I said, if you want to ask me anything from the weekend, you're welcome to do so. So 425-780-7566 is the text message line if you have questions about AEW, Double or Nothing Weekend. Ask your questions, I'll do my best to answer them. And uh, if you're a subscriber, which uh, last week we did that uh, special, we did a one-day special, $3.99 for a month. And if you, I warned you, if you didn't do it, too bad. You missed out because we've had some great shows up over the last couple of days. The show with Filthy, uh, the show last night, uh, Brian, Vinny, Granny, and Craig. We talked all about Double or Nothing. And, and if you want to hear the uncensored, uncensored rant, about the America's Diner in New York, New York, <laughs> and also the atrocity that is Spirit Airlines. If you want the uncensored, the uncensored story of both of those occurrences, it's probably Spirit that's caused me to be stricken as well now that I think about it. But anyway, that is up on the uh, Brian, Vinnie, Granny, and Craig show last night, and that one I suggest you all listen to. Because I can't, I can't have that go unlistened to. Let's just put it that way. Oh, Granny with some good pronunciations too. I heard Granny was incredible last night. We had a new one last night. We had a new one last night. I mean, if you've listened to the Granny show before in her her weekly wrestling report, this one last night we we set a new standard. So I recommend that one as well. Don't miss out, everybody. You'll you'll regret it. And yes, I watched uh, ninety minutes of NXT two point oh. <laughs> ninety. I didn't. I didn't finish the last half hour. I had, you know, I had a lot to do sequestered in this room. <laughs> like, what am I going to do? Where's my, you know, I don't need pants, thankfully. But uh, <laughs> it's the best part about doing this show, isn't it? Yeah, I don't have any on right now. So, uh, oh yeah, not filthy. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, it was the Landstorm show yesterday. <laughs> I got to my uh, figure four dailies messed up. I, I had a personal show with uh, Filthy Tom when we went on a date <laughs> on Monday. That was a lot of fun. But anyway, I bet you got a personal show. <laughs> yeah, it was a great. It was a great day. So uh, anyway, uh, what else do I have to talk about? Oh yeah, I watched ha- 90 minutes of NXT 2.0, so we can do that review today. We can also do the Raw review because I know you guys are all excited for those two. Now, which 90 minutes did you watch? Uh, the first 90. Okay. I haven't finished the show. <laughs> Just came in late. You know, watched the middle. You know. Faded out for a while, caught the end of it. You never know how you get your 90 minutes. I, I can't say that I like it yet, but I kind of think I like it. What? I kind of think I'm becoming a fan of this new NXT. Oh, the, the, the it's, look, people, it, talk, people talk about cosplay wrestling. They kind of hit me last night where it's like, these are people who really, a lot of them really want to be in professional wrestling that now look like they really are playing professional wrestling with whatever costume that they've been given. See, the thing is, like, the uh, there were segments of the show that were just, like, beyond atrocious. Atrocious. Like, <laughs> the, the contract signing with Toxic oh. Attraction and, and you know, the pajama lady. Horrible. Absolutely, atrociously horrible. But there's other stuff on the show that, like, dude, Tiffany Stratton, the promo she did. Jeez. This character is so great. And she's perfect at this character. And uh, the matches were sort of sort of hit and miss, but, you know... It's harmless, and literally, I have nothing. I literally have nothing else that I can do. I can't leave this room. I can't do anything. So I was entertained for uh, for most. Well, you'll of that. be happy to see the end of it once you do with the main event with Cameron Grimes and Nathan Frazier. Because how can it how could it be bad between those two unless something goes completely? And off I heard the rails? that match was awesome. I heard it was yeah, NXT one point match. Well, that's the thing is it, it was the only negative to it was whatever percentage of time was spent stuck in the box during the commercial. 
and you just look at the match and you go, look at this little bit of time they had to basically set up a Cameron Grimes win so Carmelo Anthony could go after him at the end or, or Carmelo Hayes could go after him at the end and Trick could come after him. And you can imagine what these guys could do if if they were put on an in-your-house together for a match. And you, the sky's the limit for Ben Carter slash Nathan Frazier. I don't know if it's there or not, but somewhere in this world, this guy's going to be a star for a long, long time. And we may be looking at the next Pac. We may be looking at the next, you know, guy in that vein who has come along. I mean, he is fantastic. You know, now that I think about it, maybe I lost my sense of smell, and that's why I liked NXT 2.0 yesterday. Is that possible? Be careful what you talk about when you talk. Never mind. So we'll uh, we'll go to those a little bit later. <laughs> There's a show as noted Saturday: Braun Breaker versus Joe Gacy, where Breaker Wait a can second. lose the title via Saturday. DQ. Yeah, I thought it was Monday. Didn't you hear Pretty Deadly say we'll see you on Monday? Oh, did they? Yes. Well, you know they're from overseas, so the that's... time change. That's true. Sure. Uh, Braun Breaker can lose the title via DQ because, you know, why, why? Wouldn't you, why wouldn't you spend your money on a match where if you pay, you might get a horrible ending that you don't want? Why would NXT give Joe Gacy that never stipulation? It. They never got into it as to, like, I'm going to, you know, I, I just don't. We got Manny Rose, Wendy Chu, Cameron Grimes versus Carmelo Hayes, Pretty Deadly versus The Creeds, Gigi Dolan and JC Jane versus Katana Chance. And Caden Carter, and uh, Santos Escobar's crew, and Tony D'Angelo's crew, are gonna have a turf war, and the losing team must join the winning team stable. Bro, this show is awesome. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. This person's apparently angry. I'm not talking more about AEW. Dude, the show's tonight. I don't know what they're gonna do. It's a follow-up okay. show. I read I read the lineup. If you have questions, I told you guys. If you have questions, text me. I'll talk about the weekend. So what are you supposed to be talking about? What are, what are they so upset about? What are they I don't know. You want me to read the lineup again? All right. We got uh, CM Punk and FTR versus Max Caster and the Gun Club. Darby Allen, Jungle Boy, and Luchasaurus, and Matt Hardy and Christian Cage versus Hikaleo, Bobby Fish, Kyle O'Reilly, and the Young Bucks. Britt Baker, Jamie Hayter versus Ruby Soho and Tony Storm. John Moxley versus Daniel Garcia. And we hear from MJF. There's a reason I tweeted out my Sports Illustrated article. Everybody is... on Twitter who's uh, jumping up and down going, you know, I don't care. I don't care what anybody says. If this is a work, I don't, ca- I don't care. Okay. It, it's okay. It's okay to watch wrestling and not have to, like, you know, get involved in the backstage politics of it all. I know the people listening to this show, you like that sort of thing. You you, you love that stuff. That's why you're here, and we love you for it. But, like, for the average person, like, I just ignore, just turn off the social media. That's all you have to do. Bro, let me tell you something. Bring up your your wrestling fandom remarkably. Let me tell you something. We get paid to do this. We get paid to be here, and we love doing it. That is for sure. But, like, there are some people where it's like, unless you just love the the banter and the the push pull and the fight of being online, just just don't pay attention to that. Guys, stuff. if that you're it? if you're listening to this right now, I don't care if you're a fan, I don't care if you're a wrestler, I don't care if you're a reporter. You have you have two options. You can either you can either laugh off social media or you got to get rid of it. Those are your only two options. Those are literally the only two options. You either have to laugh it off or get rid of it. Period. There's no third option, okay? There's only two. Laugh it off or get rid of it. And then, you know, you can thank me later. But I'm telling you. So, let's talk about these shows. Should we do Raw first? Wait, we, we're, we're really going to do a Raw review from yesterday? It's not going to take long. But honestly, the best thing about uh, Raw wasn't even on Raw. It was a uh, Kevin Owens interview that he did uh, backstage with Kevin Patrick. If you've not seen it... Go find this Kevin Owens. Just probably search, if you're actually still on social media, Kevin Owens and uh, and Kevin Patrick, and just watch this fantastic performance by actually both of them. Kevin Patrick is a, he's just a, a fantastic dork. He's like a, 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 just a fantastic dork. So we had uh, Becky come out, and she talked about the history of uh, Asuka winning the title, and then her giving up the belt and all this and that. And then Bianca showed up, and there was a brawl. And this led, I'm getting through this quick, everybody. Led to uh, Bianca versus Asuka. And uh, you know how it goes. Whenever you're building to a three-way, everybody has to do a job to everybody else. 
And uh, the finish saw Asuka go for a La Mahistral cradle. And Bianca sat back, pinned her, and uh, that was that. And then Becky hit the ring afterwards, and there was a uh, brawl. She laid them out. Actually, they laid her out. Is that right? I don't know what happened. It doesn't matter. They're setting Set up her packing, I think. Yeah. yeah. We had Ezekiel, Rey Mysterio, and Dominic versus Kevin Owens, Chad Gable, and Otis. Story of the match is that Kevin Owens accidentally super kicked Chad Gable, which allowed Ezekiel to get the win. So unknowingly, or uh, he didn't mean to, unknowingly, I guess it's unknowingly, but anyway, Kevin Owens uh, allowed Ezekiel to win. It was because of Kevin Owens that Ezekiel got the win. So of course, Kevin Owens is even more furious now because uh, the guy won and it was because of him. We had a uh, Cody Rhodes promo. Seth Rollins came out. And uh, I've mentioned this many times, but, uh, bro, this Seth Rollins laughing gimmick is just death. It's absolute death, this laughing. Because it's impossible to, to take anything that he does seriously when he just is laughing everything off. Now, with that said, he starts laughing. And then he cuts what was actually a fantastic, it was one of the best Seth Rollins promo I've seen in I don't even know how long. And then he laughed again, and it sucked. But uh, they're having a final match at uh, at Hell in a Cell, and uh, they had a great pull-apart brawl afterwards, a fantastic brawl, which, of course, was interesting because they brawl, like, all over everywhere to build up a match where they'll all be st- well, they'll be stuck inside a cage. So if you want to see him fight, you're going to see him fight coming up on, on Sunday. But uh, it was there were, like, five pull-apart brawls on this show, and this was by far the best of them. We had Alexa beating Dewdrop three minutes. I mean, whatever they were doing with Dewdrop and Nikki Ash, like, it's just nothing's happening now. Uh, Nikki Ash is out there. She's still a superhero. They're not doing tags. Dewdrop gets beat right here. So uh, there you go. By the way, two things. Yesterday, we were reading the uh, lineup for NXT 2.0. Do you remember the lineup for NXT 2.0 yesterday? Yes. They said tonight... The finals of the breakout tournament. Well, you know, it didn't happen. Said, they said yeah. they didn't have the finals of the breakout tournament. Now, now the breakout tournament finals are next week. Well, last week they also, and I'm sure about this because people went back and they screenshotted it. Last week they announced that on Raw Monday it would be the in-ring debut of Lacey Evans. Lacey Evans would return in the ring for a match. Of course, Lacey Evans was not on the show because Vince changed his mind. Remember that uh, statement they put out about delivering to the fans and millions that were disappointed? Anyway, we had uh, Ms. TV with the Street Profits. They basically just took over the show, and then they did a goofy 24-7 segment in the middle of this, and uh, Dana ends up getting pinned by Tamina. And then uh, afterwards, she kisses Tozawa, who she's filed for divorce from, and then immediately he rolls her up and he pins her. Because, you know, his character is just like an idiot. So he's now the 24-7 champion. Mustafa Ali versus Ciampa. And this was just bizarre. So uh, Ali, the winner of this match, gets a shot at uh, Theory at the pay-per-view for the title. So uh, Ali faces Ciampa, and uh, Theory just runs in for the disqualification. And so Ali has won via disqualification. So now he's going to get a title shot at the pay-per-view. Or I guess, uh, yeah, he's getting a title shot at the pay-per-view, yeah. right? Yeah, maybe, well, well, because no, okay, I remember Theory now. said he got his yes. shot, and then Vince... Well, you're supposed to get a shot at the pay-per-view, but then Theory does a, a, a promo, and he goes, why why wait, let's do it tonight! Because, of course, uh, Ollie has been beaten up and laid out. So, you know, this ref is just a horrible person. The ref rings the bell for the championship match, as um, Ollie's not even on his feet yet. And uh, Ollie gets a quick comeback, but then, of course, Theory defeats him. And then the storyline is that Vince McMahon has sent a text saying that this was a brilliant thing by Theory, but boy, would I like to see a fair one-on-one match. So it will be Theory versus Ollie at the pay-per-view for the U.S. title. Does anybody believe that Ollie has a chance of winning this match after the way they booked this thing right here? Watch him win. Oh, but, I mean, my God. Riddle and Nakamura beat the Usos. Of course, uh, this was a uh, championship contenders match. So uh, Riddle and Nakamura will be getting a shot at the pay-per-view. But uh, because it's the Usos and they don't want to beat anybody from the bloodline under any circumstances, uh, Riddle and Nakamura won via DQ. 
to get their championship match coming up at the pay per view. It still made more sense than how they finished the uh, Ali Champa match. All you had to do was have Theory do something and have it backfire with Champa, and have Ali actually get a victory, and then you could settle out the other, you know, with Tommaso Champa later on with those two. But that was the simplest thing you could do, and they decided not to. We had Liv Morgan beating Rhea Ripley. That pretty good match, and uh, Styles uh, Priest tried to prevent. The Oblivion, exactly like Edge did last week. And then Styles attacks Damian Priest. And then uh, Morgan rolls up Rhea and pins her. And then we had a huge brawl afterwards, and they're beating up the baby faces. And Finn Balor returns and hits the coup de grace. This is going to lead to a uh, six person tag at the pay per view. And then the main event of Raw, and we're going to get these uh, ratings here in about a half hour. The main event is a contract signing. For Bobby Lashley versus MVP and Omas in a handicap match. And it was short, and uh, there was the 80th brawl of the show, and uh, Omas tried to s- something. He got speared through a table, and, uh, and that was the end of it. So I cannot say that this was like a bad show, but it was a very pedestrian, uh, by the numbers, nothing happened in Go Home show. Which uh, is better than being horrible, but really nothing to write home about here. <laughs> Congratulations on not being horrible. Yeah. Let's do some of the uh, feedback here, and then we'll uh, do some NXT 2.0 after the break. I popped for Thea Hale joining Chase U exactly as you predicted. Well, I mean, it wasn't hard to figure out. I mean, so th- you're telling me that they're going to do a storyline where a wrestler shows up on TV... To announce that she's going to Penn State and we'll see her in four years? Of course not. Swerve, bro. I found out Chase U was not an accredited university, so I've decided to take my talents to Penn State or Full Sail or whatever. We have uh, this person here saying, Sangha is officially the best babyface in all of WWE. What a oh, polite no. big man. Miles <laughs> better than any. He is the best. He's the best babyface, and he's my he is my favorite WWE giant right now. By Miles. I love this Sangha. I think he's awesome. Sangha and Wesley. Wesley. The new MSK is Sangha and Wesley. I'll be damned. <laughs> well, we'll get uh, old Ben Carter in there as well. What a trio that's going to be. I loved uh, Tiffany Stratton's promo. This person says the way she mocked Roxanne for riding a bus for 10 hours and not just taking an airplane, <laughs> which was invented 100 years ago, was incredible. Like 100 years ago. I I love <laughs> Tiffany Stratton. She's okay? the best. <laughs> Un, like, unrepentantly, I love Tiffany Stratton. Yes. She's got me. Look, I'm not judging her on her great wrestling skills. They are not there. They may never develop being in the system that she's in. But as far as a personality goes, as far as somebody who can carry the role of being a pro wrestler on my tv set she's got it now she's one of the people as bad as nxt is i don't want to see her move up to the main roster back in a moment observer live back in the show brian alvarez here wrestling observer live mike semper vv also wrestling observer.com this person says do you think they're gonna do some kind of worked shoot promo with mjf today of course jesus it's mjf i personally think it would be a bad idea doing it in front of the warner, warner media execs well, oh Jesus! Well, and there's another reason. Hey, listen, that we don't know what he's said yet, so we'll see. Well, and there's another reason everybody needs to get their heads out of their rear ends when it comes to this thing too. You have one of their biggest shows that at least they're looking at it that way because they're running for a lot. This is their first time in in L.A. and running the forums a big deal and having all those executives there and wanting to put their best foot forward. You think they're going to put MJF out there to do something to embarrass the company or anything like that? I mean, come on, come on. The guy was stretchered out on Saturday. If they really wanted to have him off this TV and they felt as though they had some concern with this guy for any reason in any way he would not be on that show tonight so come on well a couple of uh quick notes from this nxt 2.0 if you want to send oh, in by the way yes you just just because i was reading something about it everybody really seemed to to become lawyers like mjf's own personal lawyer when he came to his contract status and everything that it involves and all of the reasons that he was apparently upset or supposedly upset it's amazing. It's amazing. Everybody knows this guy's contract status, except nobody really knows this guy's contract status and what's in it, except for a handful of people. 
So uh, the NXT show opened up with the uh, pretty deadly diamond mine non-title match. And uh, what happened at the end is uh, the Creeds run out and uh, they essentially try to uh, help Roddy. But uh, it ends up backfiring, get knocked off the apron and uh, Strong ends up getting hit and pinned for the three count. And uh, later Strong argues, I could have won by DQ. At least it would have been a win. <laughs> and Roddy had told them to stay in the back, but they did go out there and actually help him And uh, when he was in peril. It's not like they went out there and gunked it up. It was, uh, yeah, so there was that part of that story, too, with Roddy looking like he may be splitting up the diamond mind. Well, he said, if you guys don't win the tag titles on... Saturday, you are out of Diamond Mind. Now listen, I don't know what's going to happen on uh, Saturday. I have no idea. But I do know that the Creeds had been under the impression, of maybe a few times, at least once, and I think actually more than once, that they were going to be winning the tag team titles and it didn't happen. So my guess is they're winning the tag team titles coming up at the uh, at the show. We had the segment sit-down challenge for Escobar and uh, Tony D'Angelo's crew. Ugh. I mean, I kind of like them. I don't know why. Dude, this whole thing. I mean, l- let's let's take a little drive on the boat. <laughs> it's like if you're going to have a meeting on a boat, you do it at the dock. You don't take a, a leisurely cruise up and down unless you plan on killing somebody and dumping them over the side of the boat, which did not happen. And instead, we have this completely ridiculous, and I... I'm cool if you like this, but this is so bad, and it's not even it's not even bad enough to be good, in my opinion. It's just bad. It's corny. It's goofy. And Tony D'Angelo wrestling uh, Phantasmo, you know, doesn't bother me at all. But like <laughs> the, the thought of seeing two dimes and stacks, you know, being wasted against uh, Cruz, and I just I don't know. That whole thing, Legato has been so screwed up there. And, and Electra Lopez, and I know we're going to get to her, a second-generation wrestler and everything. Her father is Steve King. She's been doing this for a long time now. And I know they like her look, and she does have a presence with that group when she's standing next to them. But, man, maybe she should just have a presence more and, and not worry about the wrestling aspect. Cora Jade and Electra Lopez. This was not good. This was not good. And uh, Cora Jade won. You ever seen like a, a seated drop kick? Where like yeah. essentially you just run and you you take a bump and then your feet hit the person and they take a bump. Not Electra Lopez. Like she kicked Cora Jade so hard on this move. It's like God. And then they had some spot where they were trying to get through the ropes and it was in, not good. No, not good. Uh, then we had a, the Sangha segment where he gave a pep talk to uh, Wes Lee. I like this Sangha. We had a great vignette for uh, the former Roxy talking about growing up and wanting to be a WWE superstar. And they had all of this footage of her when she was a little girl. They had video footage. They had photos. I've heard all these WWE events, meeting the wrestlers, and talked about driving 10 hours both ways to train with Booker T. And it was a great what? video. Wants to grow up and be a great WWE superstar like Nikki Bella. Who was her other inspiration, her first one? I don't remember. But it was like Nikki and AJ, and they had clips Paige. of her Paige. meeting. Yeah, Paige and Naomi. Uh, so, uh, Wesley beat Zion Quinn with a cradle. The very first spot they did, they almost screwed up. Wesley is, is great. Uh, Zion Quinn needs a lot of work. But he's tall and handsome. So you'll be seeing him on the main roster at any moment. Horrible, horrific Joe Gacy promo. <laughs> then we had a backstage promo with Braun Breaker, where uh, there's this crazy laughing ass act all scared. But then he gets all tough and he gets mad. And he's about to smash a TV when he realizes, oh, wait, if I do this, I'll be DQ'd. And so he calmly puts the television down. And I'm like, do you idiots know what a go-home show is all about? On the go-home show, the guy should get mad and smash the TV. So you think, oh, man, I hope he doesn't do this. Well, actually, it's like the whole... When I say that, but, like, the idea that, hey, here's the stipulation. The guy you like could get screwed. So get your ticket now. But, I mean, if you're going to do that, then you should do an angle where the guy's all angry on the go-home show. Instead, he proves... Oh, I'm not going to get angry. I won't get DQ'd. It's like, what? 
Tuesday night, the performance center turns into just like some wacky fun house where you never know what's going to happen in each room. Like over here, Toxic Attraction's got like some, you know, some things set up here. Wendy Chu's got a bedroom set up like some girl or something like that, some teenage girl. And then in this room, the lights are just going to go crazy. Mackenzie Mitchell's just going to slide out of the shot while the camera shakes and the lights go crazy. And then Braun recognizes that he can't smash this monitor and then she just comes sliding back in again just like nothing happened weird place at nxt we had this nxt women's championship summit oh god oh my god so oh lord it was almost so bad it was good but it wasn't it was so bad it was bad Especially Wendy Chu just screaming at her to sign the contract over and over again. But that's what I think. At least she was speaking for the people because everybody else trying well, to Well, she talk. was, but she said it in such an irritating manner that it was like, Ooh. are you supposed to be a baby face or a heel? Dude, look at the promo that was coming from Katana Chance and, and what's her name? Uh, yeah, this was horrible. It was all bad. And then Chu, uh, I guess, hits a spit wad. Yes. On Mandy Rose. Out of a straw, a spitball. Yes. Breaks down into a fight. It was it was horrible. I actually liked Ivy Nile, uh, the promo she cut on Keanu James. It's weird because, like, Ivy Nile is, uh, she's, she she's a very wooden promo, but uh, but somehow she pulls it off. You know, some some humans are wooden. You know what I mean? So I never feel like she's just bad at doing promos. I just feel like that's who this ivy nile is like that's her normal delivery in everyday life so it doesn't bother me as much as other wooden promos do but she did push her into a locker and cut a promo i thought she had you know for being wooden i thought it was actually a very good wooden delivery she kind of comes off like a uh uh i don't know how to describe it really like you know when you see someone it's just like they don't have a lot of emotion so it's kind of scary you know who she could be modeled after and, and i hope somebody that could help her beth phoenix who actually had a lot more charisma, a lot more, I think, self-confidence, uh, you know, of, of being a wrestler, obviously, once we saw her debut on Raw or wherever it was that we saw her debut for WWE. But that's where I think Ivy Nile, that's somebody who, that should be kind of the inspiration there and kind of work her along that way. She's got such a great presence, such a good look. And with the creeds, you know, it makes sense. If they could find who she is, her as kind of the mouthpiece and being the person that drives the creeds, if they later on decide to break up Diamond Mind, I think it's a good idea. Solo Sokoa beat Duke Hudson, just uh, hit him with a splash and everything like that. And then the last thing I saw was uh, the Thea Hale segment where <laughs> they have they have video from her high school graduation, and so she's weird. getting her diploma. Ah, She's all happy, and they've got pictures with all of her other friends and everything like that. And then, uh, and then she's at a desk virtually exactly like I'm at right now with one mic. And she's got three hats from three different colleges. And she announces that she's about to go. I don't remember where she said. Notre Dame. And then, like, the hat doesn't fit. She goes, this don't feel right. And she pushes all of the hats off the table and announces, I'm going to chase you and they cut backstage to this tiny little room <laughs> there's like nine geeks in there and they're all yeah and they're going like this and they cut back to uh whatever name is thea hale she's going yeah and she's doing a dance it was so <laughs> campy it was preposterous but i liked it yeah I, I didn't like that one as much as you did but i thought it was it was it so was, stupid it was it wasn't so, even that trying was, not to be stupid that's the that was stupid enough to be funny and that was stupid enough to be good so i that was pretty much it other than you did miss another vignette for giovanni uh vinci. oh yeah this guy yes who is by the way giovanni vinci i don't know but i'm about to sneeze as we wait and anticipate. Take over the damn see. show! I am. I'm right now. I'm doing a dramatic, uh, see if he sneezes. He's got his hand over his nose right now. He's starting. He's looking all like right. he's going to choke. No, I'm good. All right. So anyway, that's all I saw from NXT 2.0, everybody. Sorry. <laughs> well, then it was Cameron, Cameron Grimes and Nathan Frazier. And again, Cameron Grimes got the victory there. I would love to see more out of those guys. And before Cameron Grimes got beat up by Trick and... Uh, and Carmelo, he ended up escaping, so he ends up standing there uh, tall and is, was able to survive uh, before his uh, North American title match coming up on this premium live event Saturday. This person here says, did the crowd at Double or Nothing know who Stokely Hathaway was? On pay-per-view, it came across as super quiet. Well, it's weird, because I've mentioned this countless times. 
I go to a lot of live shows, okay? And it's always amazing to me the different reactions from people who are watching in the arena, where they are in the arena. And the best example is, to me, the Thunder Rosa serena D match. Bro, I was sitting there at ringside. And you can go through my timeline, and in the middle of that match, I tweeted, this crowd is tired because they were dead. And uh, then I go to a show with Dave, and Dave's like, this crowd was hot from start to finish for this match. And I was like, what? I was there. But wherever he was, you know, he was in a uh, suite or whatever. And, you know, you I, when I was there, Stokely Hathaway came out and there was a big pop. I don't know how it came across on television. It often, uh, you know, you get varying. Uh, and, you know, I didn't mention this in the, uh, the Raw report. But, uh, you know, there's all this talk about crowd sweetening in WWE and how it's all fake and this and that and, and you know, getting worked and everything like that. But, I mean, bro, I've said this a thousand times. Crowd sweetening only does so much, okay? If this crowd's dead, you can turn that sweetening on and it's still a dead crowd. And if you cut a promo and it gets a big pop, yeah, there's probably a little bit of sweetening, but you could see the people stand up and pop. And the best example is, do you know what the fans were chanting during one of the segments on Raw Monday? What's that? For the first time in years, there was a CM Punk chant. And do you know that they were unable, they were unable to remove that chant from the live broadcast? And I'm sure they turned up their sweetening, but it didn't work. You could still hear CM Punk chants because the sweetening adds a little bit. But, like, if you listen, you can hear the actual crowd. Whether they're hot, whether they're not hot, they could try to drown. It, it doesn't matter. You could still hear it. So, anyway, back in a moment, everybody. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Hey, if you got a few extra bucks and you want to throw them to Whale Scout, just go to WhaleScout.org, hit that donate button. My poor wife. Aww. I left on Thursday and... Everyone immediately got sick, although they didn't have COVID. And so she had two, her and two sick kids the entire weekend. And finally, I come home late Monday night, and we're all ready. Oh, man, daddy's back, and I immediately get sick. So now she's going to be a total of like two straight weeks having to handle these kids all by herself because I end up getting COVID. We're trying to and figure out. Yeah, I You'll normally be the biggest baby of them all. I, nah, I'm not a baby. Get out of here. But I normally, I normally do this show, and then I immediately go cook lunch for everybody. And uh, now I can't. So I'm like sending her down info on how and what to cook everything. Uh, do you have a little bell that you're ringing to just to drive her extra nuts? Like, I'm honey, not driving her you. nuts at all. Oh uh, yeah, I'm making uh, life as easy as possible. I'm, I'm sure you're a horrible coming person. Coming from that room, you know, horrible person. <laughs> Golly, you're gonna want her to wait on you hand and foot. I know you. There's nothing she can do. We have to be sequestered. Doggy, well, you know, slide it through that doggy door you got up there for that studio. You got a couch in there. You got everything else in there. You never have to leave. You're I do have everything in, in this in this office, basically. I got a TV, a couch, an iPad, and uh, the studio. So, <laughs> And peace and quiet from the kids that you are going to pay for once you get back. Well, I got the window right here so I can look down while they play outside so I can communicate with them. Oh, it's like jail, though. <laughs> like, it is like jail. I'm literally in jail it, right like... now. <laughs> I'm just going to sit here and I'm going to find some movies to watch. I can't do anything else. I like to hurt people, the Sheik uh, movie. You got to go back and watch that one. You ever see that? Bro, we got to go. But I'll be back tonight with Dave, everybody. Got a lot to get into here. It'll be tonight for subscribers, WrestlingObserver.com. Thanks, y'all, for listening. Thanks for all the well wishes. I'll be back here tomorrow with more Wrestling Observer Live.